Hi, students enrolled in Statistics for Behavioral Sciences. My name is Dr. Amy Nadewell, and I want to explain a little bit about your project. I'm going to do a series of videos that I want you to pay attention to. Uh, the very first video is going to be explain, an explanation of the rationale, the thinking behind it. I am a, re a a resilience researcher that means I'm interested in positive outcomes for individuals and specifically positive outcomes for individuals who've experienced stress and trauma how is it that they're able to recover and let's say go on to college or have a successful career be successful parents when others struggle and are unable to do as well therefore there will be several data analysis projects that you will be submitting over the course of the semester that will have a very similar theme. We're going to use a large data set that I have collected with my colleagues where we have collected a series of, of surveys, which we love in behavioral sciences. Um, we've asked students from Southeastern Oklahoma State University, Cameron University, and Oklahoma State University to give consent to complete a survey over resilience and stress and trauma. This data set includes four, uh, four data from 451 students, and we're gonna use that throughout the semester so that you get real life experience with a real data set from real students just like you. Um, so you can actually apply what we're reading about and what we're learning about in this course. It's to give you um, a, a feel good um, sense of self-efficacy, that you can do what you're learning. And I hope that you will then apply this at whatever agency you end up getting a job or if you're currently working. Um, if you go to work for a nation or um, any kind of a nonprofit or a the prison system, public or private, you will be expected to understand and to run basic statistics, um, especially if you would like a promotion um, and um, if you want to help those individuals that you are serving. I'm going to go ahead and start and to share my screen. And I'm going to blackboard our course shell here. Please open up and follow along with me. Um, here's our statistics course, <clears throat> and the, you'll see on the left-hand side plenty of links. I want you to scroll down to the DAP dataset and supporting articles link. The very first thing you see is the uh, research activity that I signed for ver our very first week. I want you to read over the following research and materials research materials and while you're reading these pages think about which items you might want to research these items include the scale of protective factors the connor davidson resilience scale and the life stressor checklist revised i ask that you print a copy of these materials and have it handy just so you can continue to think and to brainstorm, potentially talk with your partner, other people from the class, um, important individuals in your life, and to brainstorm. Think about research ideas that you have. Why? Because I don't want you to just do well in this class. I want you to have some nice project that you could talk about at your next job interview upon graduation or a nice project you can talk about when you're interviewing for graduate school. This is real, uh, real data that you can play around with and potentially explore an idea that you would like to continue in your career. If we download this Word document, you can tell it's a Word document because the file ends, the file type is .docx. <laughs> Here my file has downloaded. If you have yet to do this, I would like for you to make sure to spend time answering these questions. How did you feel when you were answering these questions? What ideas came to mind? And what, I, what topics would you potentially like to research throughout this semester? The very first 24 items 
are assessing sca the scale or the scale of protective factors, which are designed to assess an individual's social support, social skills, planning and prioritizing behavior, and goal efficacy. These four factors are, are evident and seen among individuals who are able to bounce back after the occurrence of stress or trauma. I wanted you to calculate your score. Here's the reference for the article. The Connor Davidson Resilience Scale, 25 items measuring overall resilience. You would just get a total score. And the reference, keep scrolling. Finally, to the Life Stressor Checklist Revised. I'm gonna talk about this all semester long because I, it's a great assessment uh, to, to really allow each of you to focus this data set on a topic that's interesting to you. I want you to pick topics for your data analysis projects that are interesting to you because it's not gonna benefit you if I assign everybody the same project. I want you to add your own interests, your own thinking, your own ideas, and to dig a little deeper. Think about how you might use this information to and enhance your thinking, and then also to help you land a job or maybe get you into graduate school. Okay. When we look over the life stressor checklist items, <clears throat> there's an important thing to note. These, this is not the entire measure of the life stressor checklist. The survey we were given, we um, gave students stated. Number one, have you ever been in a serious disaster? For example, an earthquake, hurricane, large fire explosion. And a student, if they said yes, then they were given a one. If a student said no, they were given a zero. That's the very first question given. If a student said yes, they were given a follow-up question and said, how much has this affected you over the last 90 days? That is an important criteria. We're interested in knowing how much it's affected them over the last 90 days so we can understand a little bit more and maybe get at post-traumatic stress disorder. This isn't the best measure to get at post-traumatic stress disorder, but it is used. Um, if, it is, if this trauma is highly affecting someone it, and they're still able to continue, um, then we might want to study them a little bit further to figure out how they're overcoming this. What coping mechanisms are they doing? Are they in therapy? Um, do they have a good counselor, a good social worker, family resources, religious support, etc.? cetera? Um, so I want you to be thinking about that. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a PowerPoint presentation later on in this series. The initial idea for you to review these demonstration materials is for you to get your researcher hat on and to think about what you would like to talk about throughout the rest of this semester. I will go ahead and end the video now and there will be additional videos explaining additional materials that are required for your data analysis project. I do hope that you will visit me in office hours and visit our statistics tutor for her tutoring sessions or schedule additional tutoring with her. Thank you.